Hello and welcome to Adventures in Pop-Ups where we do campsite reviews, tricks, tips, hacks, mods to help you make your camping adventure more fun. Thanks again for joining us. Well, Rachel, what do we got on the docket for today? We are going to talk about our top 10 list of modifications to help make your campsite and camping experience more yes. Let me say before I get started that I will put links to all of the things so that if you're looking for that, it's already in the description. So you can check that out. And if you appreciate this information, we appreciate a like, a comment, a subscribe, show us some love. We love you guys. And let's start with number 10. Okay. Number 10 is actually an essential, not just a modification. Please make sure you have wheel chocks and levelers. We actually just, I, I had a mini heart attack when we set up um, just recently because the wheel chocks were in, but when we disconnected from our tow vehicle, we felt it go, we felt them engaged. And I, I had half a second of a, <gasps> and I've seen people post pictures of backing their, their runaway trailer, campers. runaway campers and they hit a tree and I'm like, oh no. Get some wheel chocks and use them. Don't forget them. A runaway camper is how you have a not so great adventure. Not awesome. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to damage your pop up or your RV. No. Number nine. Number nine is locks. Um, you want to tell them what we have? You can. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it's just a, a hitch lock. Just a hitch lock. So they're not all created equal. Uh, probably should upgrade to a bigger better one because some are easily pickable but i yeah. figure it's gonna curb 70 to 80 percent of criminals i don't think there's too many of them especially around campsites but yeah while you're camping i don't think that's an issue i don't really expect someone to come and try to take away our pop-up while it's set up in the middle of camp with other campers around you'd have to be pretty stupid to do that a pop-up's a little bit harder to steal probably yeah. than a regular rv but in the driveway, if you don't have it blocked in with a vehicle, you might want to think about a lock or people even put a boot on the wheel. That is a lot more secure because actually I hear that the locks on the hitch are pretty easy to pick. So if somebody wants it, the saying goes, if you can get some good money for your pop-up, so can a thief. Number eight. Number eight. Waterproofing spray. We chose to do this on our old pop-up just as a security measure to make sure we were good, watertight. Um, we chose to do it on this one because the previous owners had never done it. And some people say, you don't ever have to waterproof canvas. It's fine. The canvas needs to breathe. Um, I disagree. We, we did the water test and it was not leaking, but it was getting very damp. And you could tell that the, the fabric was just soaking in the water. Yeah, so we still needed to do our windows more. Yeah, we've got a few spots to um, finish up. We put two big cans on this. This one has a lot of canvas. Um, you don't have to do the vinyl. I like to do it a little bit, especially you know just to help protect it, like a protective barrier. Um, yeah. But if you don't do it on your windows, um, you can get some leakage by contact, like if your pillowcase is up against right. the canvas the sheets and, blankets. and it's been raining for a day or two, yeah, and then you fold it up and then, yeah, you're going to get your sheets and blankets maybe a little damp. So then you just want to avoid the mold and the mildew and the wetness, the, right. the, the, the dampness. So uh, probably a good idea to do a good wash. How would you wash and then clean? I, I If you don't have any stains, um, and we can talk about stains and other things in a different video, but if you just want to give it a good wash, I just put a squirt of Dawn, a little bit of vinegar in hot water and scrub it down and give then it, hose it off. Give it a scrub, scrub brush, give it a wipe down with a cloth and then just give it a good rinse. And let then it dry. Let it dry. And, and spray then, it on. I don't know. I just, I feel better when it rains and I see the water beating up as, as opposed to soaking in. Yeah. That's, that's much One of better. my favorite phrases is wa like water off a duck's back. That's what you that's want. What that's what I'm talking that's about. That's what you want for your canvas. Water off a duck's back. Number seven is the pressure cooker. I know I've talked about it in other videos. In fact, you can check out other videos. Um, 
I bring my pressure cooker and I plug it in directly to the shore power because it will trip a breaker inside the camper. Um, however, I use it for, well, I use it all the time at home, so it only makes sense to bring it with camping. Also, I use it for reheating meals. Uh, it's just really easy to put it in the back of the van. This last trip, um, we just, we plugged it in, we put some water in it and set the frozen chili packet in there to boil the vacuum seal bag and it just did its thing while we were getting ready for camp setting up go check the chili get, gave it a little turned it over a few times and it was good so i highly recommend thinking about the pressure cooker if you need a pressure cooker i will totally drop my favorite in the comments or in the description um, i've actually had three different kinds now so i i feel like i have a favorite and i'll i'll recommend that one to you and not only was it good it was easy Good and easy. Such a good combo. Easy is better. It makes everything more fun. And I didn't even have the dirty dish because I served it right out of the vacuum. Right out of bag. the bag. So Just had water in a pot. So Dump it out of the bag. Yes. Water. Let's talk about water. You can get a water a water pressure regulator to put on the, um, on the camper. That's to make sure that you don't get too much water coming in from the line. Um, we haven't had this problem, but I have heard that some campsites or even at your house, you get too much water pressure, you can bust a line. Um, something that I really do want to recommend too, though, is just a filter pitcher. This is just from Walmart. I'll have a link in the description, but we just throw water in the top, let it come out the bottom. Um, if I know we're going on a big hike, I'll preload it ahead of time so I can keep refilling the water bottles and get some ahead of time. But that way you don't have to pack 500 gallons of water for you guys to be drinking and to brush your teeth and all the things if you're scared to yeah. drink the water. Most of the water you're going to be drinking is pretty good, but it's we just like fine. to do an extra filter. I think there's an attachment for a filter that hooks right up to your camper too, right? Yes, yeah, so you can get one that will actually go to the hose before it enters your camper and filter everything. I'd like to do that someday. We just haven't yeah. done it yet. We usually just do dishes and don't drink the water out of the... Yeah, we just don't system. really drink the water except for the water pitcher. Um, also, water is heavy. If you just bring an empty water pitcher filter, then that's way lighter and you don't have to worry about running out. Number five is our camping journal. Obviously, this is not an essential item. This is more of a comfort item. We love our camping fun. journal. It's a fun item. It is fun. It's a fun thing to do while you're camping in the evening or if it's rainy, you can say, hey, let's bust up the camping journal. I got some questions for you. Um, this exact one, I liked the inside. I like the design on the front. I actually made one myself just with a composition notebook, but then it was falling apart. So I picked this out and... Are you showing the camera? Uh, adventure is out there. Here's our entry from Montgomery Bell State Park in Tennessee. It's by Nashville. It's awesome. It has all kinds of different things. You, I like how you can check off the weather, check off what, what does it have? Easy access. Is it paved? Does it have a dump station? Um, I add playground on there. It should be on there. It's not on there. You can put down your, how, how is your cell signal? Then it has little um, questions to help you think of things that you want to remember. And then it has a page for photos. I love this and it's fun to just keep in the camper or bring it in the house. Yeah. And then, and then you can go back and relive the adventure and yes. the kids can make the memory more real to them and remember everything that happened. And, and then you yeah. can also do it when you get back too, if you didn't do it while you were there. Right. So then it yeah. creates another family event and, uh, you know, we need to get off the TV, get off the video games and connect, play games spend time talking and um, really let our kids know how much we love them and appreciate them and show them how much fun we're having and help them to realize, hey, this is great. We're taking adventures, yeah. we're having fun, we're connecting. Connecting is the, the main goal here for camping, adventures, yeah. unplugging, getting away, going out, doing something, spending quality time together and uh, taking a little bit of a break from some of those media uh, devices. 
Yeah, it's amazing how no one asks to play Xbox when we're out camping because... Never happens. Never happens. Don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the camping journal has been a highlight for our family. And also, you can make notes on which campsites you would like if you want to go back to that place again later. You can write down what was your campsite, what was a good campsite. Um, number four. I get so many comments about this, and I want to show you our murals that we have over the bunk ends. I'm going to show you guys how exactly I did the bunk ends, the murals. You can look it up. And then what I did is I added elastic. I had foldover elastic on hand, so that's what I used. But elastic on the corners, and I figured out to use a safety pin and just pin the elastic onto the tops of the curtains where you can't see them. And in the back, it's just kind of tucked under the corner. But you kind of have to figure out what works for you and what size your camper is. Um, those are the ideas I have. If you have a better idea, I don't love the safety pins, so I would love some they, more ideas. They don't always hold. Yeah, well, I need to get stronger ones. They're pretty small. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's fun to just lay in bed, or even if you're not laying in bed, you see them all the time, and it's just, it's just a fun way to bring some more of the outdoors in. Number three is having an outdoor mat, and also, little bonus I'm throwing on, is having a shoe bin outside the camper. This is huge. It makes your whole camping experience better because it's nice to have a mat where you can walk around a little bit. Maybe you have shoes on, maybe you don't, but then when you enter the camper, you take your shoes off at the door, which we don't always take our shoes off at the door, but especially if it's muddy out or it's just a sandy area, if you keep your shoes out, you will have a lot less dirt in your camper. And I know we don't wanna be sweeping five times a day. We really like this. We really like this mat that we just got. We had a couple of ones from Five Below previously, and those were great. They're just a lot smaller. So now we got like the big nine by 12. And I really like, I really like it. It's just an indoor outdoor mat type thing. Yeah, More it, of an outdoor rug. Kind yeah, of like it's a, a pool or something. It's a straw mat basically is what it is. If you get an outdoor rug, it's probably gonna be a lot heavier, although there's tons of beautiful stuff out there. It's overwhelming. I hate shopping. Just ones. pick one, honey. Just no, pick one. I, fi I finally found one I like and I'm glad. <laughs> number two, this is, number one and number two are rivals. I don't even know how to pick which one is one or two. I think it should be the other way around. You think it's the other way around? Yeah. We could change it right now. Yep, change it. Okay. Number two, this is huge, and it is. Reflectix. Reflectix. Why do you love Reflectix, honey? Reflectix does a combination of things. This one is actually cut to fit one of our windows. Mostly fit one of our windows. If we cut it to fit our other camper. We have not recut new Reflectix. This is fine. We put Reflectix in the windows and also over the bunk ends outside. If it's very hot or very cold, it insulates and it helps keep, if you're running the air conditioner or the heater, it helps keep it in and it just reflects the sunlight in the hot sun. Uh, last year we went to Florida and it was a hundred degrees. Was it a hundred? Yeah. 97, 98, it felt like a hundred. Um, we actually stayed fairly cool. Our air conditioner couldn't quite keep up, but it was comfortable. And I know that the Reflectix played a big part in that because with, it's a tent. Yeah, with the Reflectix and the air conditioner, it was a 25 to 30 degree difference. But yeah, with just the Reflectix, yeah. you can cool off your camper by like 15 to 20 degrees. And you may not even need the air conditioning when you otherwise would have because right. you've reflected the sunlight pretty yeah. well. So over the bunk ends, in key windows or all the windows if you want I don't, we don't really do all the windows another good thing about reflectix that it blocks out the sun it helps you sleep in helps the kids sleep in. helps the kids sleep in it's like having room darkening shades which everywhere. helps me sleep in too yes and me i hope maybe maybe probably we'll not though eh, i'll start the coffee <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, number one number one that's a drum roll. That's a terrible drum roll. That was the worst drum roll. That was terrible. I'll heard. find a sound effect. I still love you though. Number one best thing we've done to enhance our camping experience is getting a 
two inch memory foam mattress topper. It's like heaven. It's wonderful. What do we got this camper? You know, it's funny because Fleetwood is, I think, a better brand than Coleman, but the mattresses were worse. I mean, the, when we looked at it and decided if we wanted to buy it, I, I just kind of did a little, ooh, I do not like that. So, we bought the camper anyway, bought a mattress topper. We went with two inches. Um, if you're not sure how much space you have, they call it the Kleenex box test. You stick an empty Kleenex box on your bed and then you fold the whole thing down and you see how squished it gets. Honestly, we didn't do it. We just took a chance. It seemed like most people said two inches were safe, so we went for it. Uh, we do have to sit on top of the camper to lock it down. <laughs> we, she means I do. He has to sit on top of the camper. I can climb up there, no problem. To get the latches done. Cause it's, and I'm the heaviest person, so it makes but sense. It's very squishy. It's wonderful. It works. I, I slept so hard. It buckles down fine. Yeah. It's perfect. It's great. It's great. It's going to be great. <laughs> it is great. But that was her Donald Trump impression. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'll cut it it's out. It's going to be great. I'll leave it in. <laughs> leave it in. It'll make everyone laugh. <laughs> okay. Number one. Mattress topper. Mattress topper. It is wonderful. B besides the two inches of memory foam, what else can they do to make it not as like a hard plywood board that they're sleeping yeah, on? Yeah, to soften the plywood board, you could put things under the mattress as well. In fact, when we're not using our Reflectix, we put our Reflectix under the mattress. A layer or it. two of Reflectix under the mattress yes. on top of the plywood will help a lot. Or... Or... People use those foam floor mats. People call them yoga mats, yeah. floor tiles. There's a lot of names for them. You can pick them up anywhere. Yeah, like it a helps top workout mat or something. Yeah, it it helps insulate against the plywood feel because you can totally feel that plywood. But if you put something underneath your mattress, other people I've seen use um, air mattresses, or they put um, an air mattress liner underneath their mattress and just inflate it when they get there. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm worried about it popping. We have four kids and a dog, and I just, I don't want it to pop. We've so. had 10, 20 air mattresses, and none of them ever yes. seem to hold air. But there's yes. the cot ones that I think are a lot better, like a cot one. But then you'd need, like, four of them, or at least two of them for the adults. Yeah. So you probably would have to buy two. But I, I think those are good. I don't know. I've never used one. Yeah, if you have, if you know a name brand of an air mattress that Drop is a comment. good, please let us know. Let um, everyone know. I don't think we have any working air mattresses. We tried to let some friends borrow air mattresses. I think I gave them two. And both of them didn't hold air, so. I mean, they hold air for half the night. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's our top 10. What's your top 10? Drop it in the comments. Yeah. And uh, thanks again for joining us in Adventures in Pop Ups. And we will see you again soon. Uh, again, thank you for subscribing, liking, uh, and yes, commenting. Comment, and uh, go ahead and hit that bell, and that way you'll be uh, notified if we do a bonus video, or that way whenever we post a new video on Monday, you'll be alerted, and you can watch it and share it with your friends who like to go camping. Yes. Thank right. you, and have a good one. We'll thank see, you. We'll see you next time.